don't want to draw like Ross draws? Well, I'll be teaching you some key elements of his art style so you can draw just like him. So let's just jump right into it. So I have here a certain collection of Ross Joss's artworks and faces. The most important part about Ross Joss's art style is the way he draws his faces. He has a certain set of proportions that he usually follows. And you can figure that out by actually studying these kinds of proportions. So for example, the corners of the mouth line up around where her eyes just about start, which is kind of common in facial proportions. The nose is extremely small and the length of the eye, the longer side, slightly tilted and also really huge. Like looking out for those certain kind of subtleties help you understand what proportions to look out for to generally imitate his style. You can see another one like this one. Here we have more space on the side of her face. If you actually take a measurement of this length over here and think about where the halfway point is, it's around here, I'd say somewhere here. And that's where um, her eyebrows uh, generally line up to. Then if you divide that again around here, that's the tip of her nose, not the bottom of her nose, but just the tip. And if you divide that again, that's generally where her mouth is and where the jaw kind of sits. Uh, or the cheek then over here at the halfway point is over here so just above the halfway point is where the eye start so yeah not only you need to think about like the size in terms of horizontal space you also need to think about the vertical space how he draws how tall these elements are when applied to the face but then again um since the faces he draws are so varied and like in different angles and stuff like that eventually you won't learn as much when you try to decode these measurements fundamentally speaking understanding proportions isn't really solved by taking ruler measurements and whatnot it's solved by repetitive practice and familiarity what i mean by that is you need to draw a lot of faces a lot of studies to nail this down you need to draw a lot of his artworks, you know, copy or trace them to get a feel for these proportions. At some point, it doesn't matter what view you're drawing the faces in, you'll have like this intuitive understanding of the eyes are too big, the mouth is too small, and you'll make certain corrections along the way. There's also another aspect of Ross Joss's art style, and that's his way of making organic and dynamic shapes for whichever painting or artwork he does you can always tell that he has this really focused goal making the actual composition and shapes that he's making to be really full of energy so this is kind of like her body is like made up of leaves and like or the organic material and stuff like that he has this really dynamic look on the shapes really making it really sharp and like all over the place you know for other artists they don't really do that like a leaf shape you would probably guess is something like this right but no he makes it way more dynamic instead of this shape he more of makes it like this so you can see here the shape is kind of like that kind of like a diamond and makes it really super sharp instead of you know just your boring rounded leaf here um you can also see that even the rounded forms have this kind of sharp and dynamism to it so for a natural snake you would probably draw it like this so the head then a rounded a rounded shape for the neck right but here here specifically on this area you can see that the snake actually has this really sharp angle which is unnatural for a snake but it looks freaking cool and it looks really dynamic and really helps with the piece and like the statement he's making with his shapes and not only that, it's pretty much every snake that he drew and painted here. Everything has like this really sharp angle to them. Even though they're snakes, they don't have those sharp edges and like um, their anatomy doesn't work like that. So make sure when you're trying to do your drawings, you have this really focused goal on making dynamic shapes and like contrasting sharp angles with 
really rounded forms when you're designing the shapes of your character or something more organic like a cloud like in this example he made clouds really dynamic um, he made the smoke and dust really dynamic he made the clouds again really dynamic and also this really huge um, statue or like structure really dynamic so make sure when you're trying to draw rounded forms ask yourself how can you make this more dynamic how can you make this a bit more sharp in certain edges how can you push the limits of realism to actually help it look cool for this one he made the snakes look really sharp and it really helped with this composition that might not be the situation for your artwork but it's the questions that you need to ask yourself when you're trying to paint all right the last aspect that i'll try to explain here is the use of colors in ross joss's artworks so here we can see that you know it, it's like it's really his like iconic style of um color dodging the hell out of the artworks that he does the paintings and really pushing the the vibrancy of the colors that he has think about this for a second what color does ross ross use over here in this color wheel is it really close to that to that saturation point or um is it like really just in the middle or really far away and i want you to think about that for both the umbrella and the dress that she's wearing so pause the video right now and think about it first so a beginner or young artist would think that this color would be like super duper saturated like right around here well if you actually look and test it out that's actually way more vibrant than what we need so if we actually eyedropper this tool you'll see that it doesn't even get close to that like critical point of that really pointed edge of the triangle of our color wheel so these are relatively tame colors but still relatively saturated he's making it really vibrant by not being that saturated at all so what's happening the same case is going around here for the dress that she's wearing it's not even getting close to that like sharp point you know so so what's happening here I, I don't understand let's take a look at this for example this this specific area so this part is really vibrant right but it's not it's not even that saturated the most the most saturated area is like right over here so this part isn't even that saturated but the reason why it looks so vibrant is because of this area right here where you can see that it's not even that saturated you know it's almost like a gray at this point you can barely see the color that's over here it's that contrast is what's making these colors pop so that's the key takeaway for the colors that ross dross is using the same goes for over here why is this pink and this like reddish pink um look so saturated well it's because it's surrounded by these stones over here well where, where you can see that the area is kind of like sitting around here not even touching this area right here so once i run through my eyedropper tool again it's not even getting close but when it goes into this red spot it takes like a huge jump in saturation and like vibrancy and that's the whole reason why um ross joss's colors are so vibrant so when you're making your next artwork and you're painting and you're choosing the colors make sure that you're not making everything vibrant but choosing the specific colors that you want to be vibrant and surround those colors with less vibrant colors that's what's gonna make your colors really pop and really take it to the next level so i really hope you enjoyed this video it was a really fun exercise as a disclaimer i don't like condone um everyone to copy like ross joss's art style one to one uh this is just more of like a guide on how to incorporate his style if you kind of want ross joss to influence you in some way but um i don't generally recommend to copy artist style one to one because I want you to find your own. Make sure to not let your voice be drowned out because like I firmly believe every artist out there has their own unique voice. They just have to find it and find it on their own. And trying to copy and imitate someone else's voice 
can help with that process of finding your own and let me know if this helped you um, understand Ross Joss's art style more. If you have any questions, you can leave them down on the comments below. I really hope um, you enjoyed watching. If you really like this video, make sure to leave a like. And if you want to see more videos just like this one, of course, you can just subscribe and um, help me boost to the algorithm. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Bye bye.